Okay, so this video follows on uh, from the previous one that was talking about uh, how we generate and use x-rays in a medical context. Uh, and this one we're going to be looking at ways that we improve x-rays. Uh, so the objective from this one is to understand how x-rays are optimized uh, to improve images and reduce radiation doses. Uh, so the key objective is to be able to state ways of improving x-ray technique, to match different improvement techniques to the problems uh, that they set out to solve. Um, so when we're using an, a medical x-ray, um, there are basically three things that we want to do. We want to be able to reduce the radiation exposure to the patient as much as possible. Um, we want to improve the sharpness of the image as much as we possibly can. And we want to improve the contrast as much as possible. So what does that mean? Uh, improving the sharpness, that means the clarity of the image, um, or basically just how blurry it is. So the sharper the image, the less blurred it's going to appear um, when you examine it, so you can make out things more easily. The contrast, um, that means the difference between light and dark patches. Um, so when we talked about earlier, um, we said that bone generally shows up as dark um, or, or dark patches, whereas flesh shows up as light patches. Um, so the contrast is where we want to see the difference between those as easily as possible. So let's start off by thinking how we can reduce the dose as much as possible. Well, here I've got my patient, um, and I'm going to start bombarding x-rays uh, through their chest, and I'm going to try and get a chest x-ray. Now, obviously, I want as few x-rays as possible uh, to be used on the patient. So one of the techniques that we use is an intensifier screen. Basically, what we do is behind the patient is we place a large plate um, of a phosphorus screen. Um, and this is called an intensifier. Now the cool thing about phosphorus is that if it is bombarded with an x-ray, um, then what it will do is the x-ray will pass through the patient, um, and when it strikes the phosphorus screen, it's going to promote some electrons uh, in that screen up to a higher energy level, and then when they drop back down, um, like this, they're going to emit some radiation. Um, so you can see there I've just drawn uh, light, uh, the electrons dropping down, and you can see the different methods that it can use to drop down. Because phosphor has lots and lots of different energy levels inside it, it's going to produce lots of different photons. We go from one high-energy, uh, high-frequency photon to lots of multiple different uh, energy photons. So that means that on my photographic plate that I put behind the image intensifier, um, I am actually going to get a huge amount of light. So from just one ray of x-rays, um, I'm going to produce hundreds and hundreds of potential photons. Um, so that's going to mean that I'm going to be able to expose my uh, photographic plate a lot more easily um, than if I was just uh, using the direct x-rays to do that. And that can uh, decrease the radiation that I need to expose my patient to by about a hundred times. Um, so I can use one one-hundredth of the instant radiation that I would have otherwise had to expose them to. So that was the first sort of historical um, use of an intensifier that cut the radiation dose down massively. Um, another uh, really popular and really widely used one um, is this device that you can see here. Um, so this is a bit more active um, and required quite a lot more physics to understand it. And it's a different type of image intensifier. Um, so what you can see here is basically we have a we cover the uh, photographic film um, in lots and lots of these individual units um, that we've got here. So we use our initial phosphorus screen that produces lots and lots of uh, instant photons. Um, but then what we can do is we can replace it um, with the tube that we're seeing here. Um, so what we can get is we can get the x-rays that are coming in and we can hit them on a phosphorus screen again. But um, what we can then do is we can use those uh, light sources that are produced. Um, if we put that um, onto a different type of phosphorus screen, um, then we can get that to produce electrons for us. Um, and you might wonder what the point of that is. Well, firstly, each of those photons can produce a couple of electrons. But secondly, uh, by using charged plates, a bit like the electron gun that you've covered before, we can make the, we can direct those electrons. 
Um, so I can make those plates, in this case, uh, positive at one end, negative at the other, say, just to focus them. Um, or I might, in fact, want them both to be positive in order to act almost like a lens. Um, so I'm actually controlling the path of those uh, electrons and causing them to all hit on another phosphorus plate. And then exactly the same principle happens again. Where these electrons are striking a phosphorus plate, it produces a load of light through the same photonic emission that we talked about earlier. And now what I've done is I've multiplied the light that's produced even more. Um, so I produce light here, x-rays come in, uh, the uh, phosphorus screen produces some photons, those photons produce electrons at another screen, uh, they're focused down onto an output phosphorus, so all those extra electrons produce even more light. So at every stage I'm multiplying the signal that I'm getting. So I'm going from just one single X-ray, I'm getting loads of signal. Okay, so we've reduced our radiation dose, now we need to try and make our image sharper. And you can see two images here that show the differences. This first image is not very sharp. Um, it's a chest X-ray, and you can see quite a lot of bones. But if you compare it to the right, you can see it's a much sharper image. This is an angiogram showing someone's uh, blood vessels. And you can see they really stand out. It's really easy to see lots and lots of detail in this image. So this one is not very sharp, and the one on the right isn't. So what's causing it? Um, the easy way to think of it is to uh, think about shadows. Um, so if you think about a spot size up here, um, most, of our, most of poor sharpness is caused by the fact that the x-rays have to come from a certain area. They can't come from a point. And if you think about what that's going to do, um, if the illumination or the x-rays are coming down over a range of different areas, then they've got a range of different paths that they can take. Uh, some of the x-rays can uh, follow the path going like I'm showing here, um, and they can reach at one location, but if they come from the other side of the, of the, the aperture, um, then they're all going to cross through the same point here, um, but they're going to arrive at different points on the photographic film. So the light from one part of the bone is going to be spread out over several different areas, and that's going to cause us uh, unsharpness. So we need some ways of fixing this and uh, reducing the, 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 these effects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and reduce the focal spot size, so the effective area that the x-rays are coming from. And the way I'm going to do that is to start thinking about my anode target. Remember it's a spinning round uh, disc of uh, metal that I'm bombarding with high energy electrons. Um, so they're coming in and they're striking this uh, anode target. Um, and when they strike the anode target, they then are producing my beam of x-rays um, heading down like that. So the first thing that I can try to do is to really tightly focus uh, my x-ray, sorry, my electron beam on the anode target. Basically, the wider my electrons end coming in, the wider my x-rays are going to be, so the larger my focal spot size. So you can see what I'm drawing here is just another target, um, but this time I'm going to draw my electrons coming in in a much tighter configuration. If they're coming in in a tighter beam of electrons, um, then the uh, x-ray beam is going to be narrower, it's going to appear to have come more from a point, um, so uh, it should, should be a point source. And again, like I said, the, the thinner the beam of electrons, the more like a point source it's going to act. Um, another method that we can use is to actually physically reduce the spot size as much as possible as well. Um, and that's really simply done just by having a set of shutters. Uh, the thinner the shutters are, uh, they'll obviously they have to be made of lead so they can block the x-rays. Um, but if I can make the shutters thinner, then it will act more like a single point, a bit like a pinhole camera. Um, so the shutters in an x-ray machine are dead simple. They're just uh, leaves of lead. Uh, they can be moved backwards and forwards to adjust the size so that you can uh, get a larger beam of x-rays if you need it, if you're doing, say, a chest x-ray, or a smaller, narrower, sharper beam if you're doing an x-ray of, say, a hand. Um, obviously requires less, uh, less area of x-rays. One more thing that we can do to uh, reduce, uh, to sharpen up our image, is to use collimation. Um, so collimation uh, basically deals with the fact that if you think about our beam of x-rays coming off of our target once more, 
um, what you will see is that they obviously are going to spread out. And again, we've got different ways of reducing that spread as much as possible. Um, but one really nice, really simple method um, is just to put blocks in the way, or these are collimators. Um, and what you do, if you have thick, uh, fairly long lead blocks, you can see that only the path that I've just drawn will actually fit through. So again, it's going to be x-rays that are going uh, pretty much straight downwards. They'll be allowed through to the patient, um, but ones going at a, a series of different angles won't be allowed. Obviously, the longer your collimators or the more collimator leaves you put in there, um, then the more tightly focused your x-rays are going to appear. Okay, one last thing that we can talk about is an anti-scatter grid. Uh, so an anti-scatter grid is basically a load of lead strips uh, all going in a line. You might have a grid going in two different directions. And if you think about this green object, that's going to be the patient. Now, when x-rays hit the patient, they are going to scatter off in all sorts of different directions. But we don't want x-rays that have gone in different directions. We only want the x-rays that have moved straight through. Um, so you can see they're marked in uh, yet, sorry, in uh, red are the primary x-rays, are the ones that have gone straight through the patient. They're the ones that we want to see. The blue lines are the uh, scattered x-rays. So an anti-scatter grid prevents those scattered x-rays from ever reaching the patient. Um, as I say, we'd also draw some in uh, going in the opposite direction, um, so they form sort of an array of lead that's going to prevent those scattered x-rays from inside the patient ever reaching my photographic film. Um, so the idea is I would have uh, all my collimators, my shutters all at the top, then my patient, then an anti-scatter grid, and then at the bottom um, I then have my photographic plate, which obviously also would include my image intensifiers and everything else. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is how we can improve the contrast of an image. And remember, the contrast is how bright and dark things appear. So you generally want as big a difference as you can between a dark and a light patch, so you can tell the difference between what you're looking at. So one of the things we start to notice is that elements with higher Z numbers tend to absorb more X-rays. So if we look at soft tissue, it's generally made up of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, with an average Z number of 7. And that doesn't absorb uh, X-rays particularly well. They tend to pass through it. Bone has a couple of other elements in there, um, and it has a higher average Z number of 14. So you can see because it has a higher Z number, that's why bones show up on an X-ray. Uh, there's a difference between these two, so we get a contrast. However, let's look at this patient here. This patient uh, has something wrong with their large intestine. Um, so doctors want to see what's wrong with it. And actually, this is a, an interesting medical condition in itself. Um, the, this large intestine should loop back down this way, but instead it's looping up into their body. Uh, not a terribly uncommon condition, but really unusual enough to be interesting. So how have they got this image? Well, what they did is they uh, got the patient to uh, either drink or rectally administer a contrast media. So contrast media tends to be either iodine or barium, and they have a much higher Z number. That means that it's going to absorb the x-rays really, really well. And you can see that here. Where they've blasted the x-rays through this patient, it's mostly been absorbed by their intestines, um, and so it hasn't got through, so it starts shining up much, much lighter. And you can see how that contrast difference has affected the patient, because you can barely make out the bones here. Normally, these bones as pelvis would appear really, really light on an x-ray, um, because the contrast would be between the soft tissue and the bone. But because the Z difference is way, way bigger here, the bones barely show up at all, but we do get this perfect image of their uh, intestines. So that's the main way that they can improve contrast. Um, sometimes you can um, inject contrast into the veins as well. So uh, if you want to see the structure of the heart muscles, uh, sorry, the heart blood vessels, then what you can do is inject a contrast media into the patient's bloodstream. That'll absorb more of the uh, x-rays and you'll see it better. Okay, so that's everything that we need to know about improving x-rays. Um, in order to really get this, what I'd like you to do is make some notes uh, on pages uh, 511. I'll just write this down for you. Um, so you need to make notes on pages 511 uh, through to 513 of your textbook. 
um, and that's going to help you just to really make sure you understand everything about this topic. Once again, if there's anything you don't understand, then uh, send me a message on uh, by email or uh, make a note on this video or on Google Classroom. Enjoy your holiday.